Hey guys, it's SharpZ, and I know that I've covered a lot of horror content this early side of November, but I feel like there's something Play I'm missing. Sharp. Something Play that them. I... Play with for... me. Get it. What is that noise? Ah, oh, darn it, not this again. This is just getting ridiculous. Bad horror games. Yeah, I didn't know it was possible either, but here we are. Horror as a genre is fairly hard to do well. Granted, to some extent, I do acknowledge that horror is subjective, and I understand that movies are media horror-wise, which I love and consider at points downright terrifying, like The Ring, The Shining, Texas Saint Chainsaw Massacre, and Perfect Blue, our shows like Shiki, The Twilight Zone, and Inside Number 9 are not for everyone. But despite that, it seems to me it's fairly universal what horror movies are considered just kinda bad or so bad they're good. And I'm not saying I don't love some of those. Movies like Leprechaun, or heck, even Jason in Space, I would consider, consider guilty pleasures. I might not want to watch them every day, but they're still fun. I mean, they have their place. However, sometimes horror content is just awful. I got all of these at the dollar store. And let's see what we have. Slender ripoff. Some weird Day of the Dead thing. Itsy Bitsy, which is what happens when you take a children's nursery rhyme and don't even take any... This one just looks like a horror parody of a Disney Channel original movie. And then uh, with this one, what I find funny is if you look at the... Uh... These are still sealed. But if you look at... <laughs> If you look in the background, you can see, like, how poorly cropped everything is in the box. Oh, boy. But, with horror games, it's sometimes a little bit harder to tell. But I think I've found a way to... I guess, put everything into good categories. You see, generally, they fall into a few specific groups. And let's start with the first one which is kind of a general um, gamble for games anyway. Regardless of genre, when it comes to video games, movie franchise tie-ins are kind of regarded as a gamble. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but the fact is they're often made to make a quick buck off of a known IP or franchise with little care ever given to what makes that franchise special. Granted, not all movie tie-in horror games are bad. For example, if you saw my horror genre in a bottle video, which if you haven't seen, I would highly recommend if you want to talk about some actually good games. There are games like Sweet Home. There are games to some extent like Dead by Daylight, which take a franchise and adapt it fairly well. And here's the thing, sometimes it's even gone the other way with how much of a history we've had with games and you get things like the Silent Hill movie. This isn't the good one, but you get the point. See, it's not really about the source material as much as it is how willing the people who are creating the game are willing to adapt it. And sometimes it can go well. But other times you can go from this to whatever in the world they put on Atari. <sighs> Bubba, what did they do to you? Uh, first off, I am not going to play the audio from this because, well, it is very painful. There are a lot of high frequencies, and for some reason, uh, they thought good sound design for a horror game would be making me want to shoot myself whenever I hear the audio, and if that was their goal, good job. As you can see here, the mechanics are frustrating, it's a little disorienting, and uh, you just have to play as Bubba and worry about fuel for the chainsaw, which is a really weird way to add up this movie. I mean, it was Atari, I don't know how much more they could have done, but let's look at what they did for Halloween. <sighs> Granted, I am going to be honest, I am not the 
biggest fan of Halloween, but I still consider it alongside Texas Chainsaw to be one of those early parts of the slasher genre. While my disappointment with the Texas Chainsaw adaptation on Atari was fairly understandable because I love that movie, maybe the adventures of um, everyone's favorite William Shatner mask wearing, uh, kitchen knife wielding, sister murdering serial killer will be fun. I just jinxed myself, didn't I? Alright, you know what? I'm actually feeling pretty good at that, this one. First off, the audio was pretty good for Atari. I love the fact that they play a rendition of the Halloween theme every time you get chased by uh, Mr. Myers, but I will say there are a few flaws that I want to point out. Number one, well, <laughs> look at it. It's kind of weird, and I don't know if this is an emulator thing, but I, I noticed it a few times when I was on Original Cartridge 2. Sometimes there are visuals where it kind of flickers a bit. Uh, number one, and number two, even though this is fairly impressive for Atari, I'm not going to even deny that, it's still lacking something. You know what? Maybe we should go a generation forward. See if uh, things get better. Oh god, this game, this video is titled Bad Video Games. Do you, do you really think that I'm going to select a good one? Please, for the love of god, someone end my suffering. <laughs> Let's move on to the idiots. <sighs> well, if everyone's favorite William Shatner mask wearing serial killer isn't capable of producing something that would be absolutely worth my time. Maybe everyone's favorite Manhattan taking spacefaring serial killer can. Friday the 13th for NES. <laughs> Alright, let's not beat around the bush. I know this game is bad. You know this game is bad. We all know this game is bad. It's something that's kind of been a common sentiment on the internet. However, here's the thing. Friday the 13th the game, compared to every other game I've played here, is somehow doing the impossible, being worse while having more going on and more content. You see, with uh, Texas Chainsaw, yeah, there's no excuse there. That's actually just a painful experience to play. But with Halloween, it was kind of an arcadey fun. Like, I still enjoyed it. But, <sighs> all right, let's just let's just say it. Jason's purple for some reason. It really doesn't suit him. And as for gameplay, what am I doing? Seriously, what am I doing? I get that the NES was a fairly limited console, but seriously, you're running away from like. Jason's dead mother, I'm assuming? I don't know, and then there's like dogs and bats and all this weird stuff. Look, I get it. I get that you couldn't really make a game where it's just Jason pursuing you the whole time, but... And here's the thing, there's a lot going on here that people don't talk about. The thing is, the developer of this game was Atlas. While it was published by JLN, who is infamous for a lot of shovelware on the NES, Atlas was the production company. And when I say Atlas, yes, I'm talking about Shin Megami Tensei and Persona Atlas. And you can kind of tell that when you look into those 3D rooms. I mean, that's kind of an Atlas aesthetic that was common at the time. But... I mean, with the other two, at least the gameplay kind of fits the movie. But here? Come on on like the counselors if i remember correctly don't really do much to try to escape jason like i feel like it almost would have been better if this game wasn't so action-packed all the time that and there's a whole lot it doesn't tell you there's just so many flaws with this game and not everything can be excused by oats on the nes but I guess I'll just go ahead and say some of the silver linings. The backgrounds look kind of nice, I guess. Um, 
the sprite work is good. I didn't run into many glitches when playing it. You know what? No, let's just move on. I feel like I've had enough in the second dimension, and, well, I will acknowledge there are other horror games that are on the NES based on movie tie-ins, some of which are kind of hot and cold for people. I've heard some mixed things about the Nightmare on Elm Street game, and I haven't played a few of the other ones. I want to say um, that most of them are kind of like Friday the 13th, where it's, it's hard to adapt a horror game onto NES. But uh, Sweet Home, which paved the way for horror games in the future and kind of cemented a lot of horror tropes that we see in video games got its start on the NES, so I, I feel like, yeah, we can we can kind of uh, forgive horror games on the NES for that. It did kind of start the genre. But, uh, maybe we should move into the third dimension now. While early horror movie tie-ins were fairly common, mainly because the uh, 70s and 80s were also part of the early slasher boom due to movies like Texas Chainsaw, Halloween, Friday the 13th, and the last one that came out to kind of round it all up, Nightmare on Elm Street, there really hasn't been too many horror movie tie-ins. Granted, we still got some interesting ones. There's games like Ash vs. the Evil Dead on PlayStation, which I haven't played and I've heard kind of mixed things on. I'm an Evil Dead fan, so I feel like if I played it, I would love it regardless. But speaking of franchises, which I'm a fan of and have made me realize just how hard it is to get a good adaptation of something. Let's talk about The Ring. The Ring is one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and the idea of a video game of it, well, it's really, really intriguing. Whatever comes out of this TV, I need to be ready. Ah, uh, shoot. No! 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 Yeah, um... Somehow the ring tears around on Dreamcast is even worse than that nightmare. Let's get into it. What hurts the most with this game is how much potential the ring has for a horror game. I mean, honestly, it sounds like a fairly simple thing to execute. One VHS tape and you have seven days to escape whatever is going on. But... Somehow this game messes up in every single way. First off, let's talk about the gameplay. Oh boy, the gameplay is terrible. It's like if you took Resident Evil's tank controls, put it through an AI filter, and then had a whole bunch of monkeys code it because it just does not feel right. The music is... It's either gratingly bad or okay because it kind of sounds like something from the movie. There's really no in-between. And the plot is what happens when you feed the Ring VHS tape to an AI and tell it to modernize it. See, the Ring is a computer program in this game, because somebody watched The Matrix and felt that, yeah, this needs more Japanese Ghost Girl. <sighs> like, seriously, it shouldn't be that hard. You just watch the VHS tape, yeah, find a way to pass the curse on, or you die. It should be a fairly simple concept. Heck, I think you could probably make a better game with less effort and less detail, even though there's practically none here. You know what? I think I've had enough of movie franchise tie-in games. Let's move on to the next category. Emphasis on the gory.
don't get me wrong, violent and gory imagery can be great, and as I showed in my larger horror retrospective, it is more than appreciated when done well. Dark themes also fall into this category, but they need to be well executed, and there can be stories and games which take these concepts and use them for more than just shock value. Build up, suspense, tonal consistency, all of these are important. Now let's just look at games that take it from normal to crazy really, really quick. <sighs> well, let's start with one that I think is probably one of the worst defenders I've ever seen. You see, visual novel horror is something that I actually have an immense amount of respect for. Games like Doki Doki Literature Club, Cooking Companions, and one that I recently played and highly recommend, Milk Inside a Bag of Milk, Inside a Bag of Milk, Inside a Bag of Milk, and its sequel, are all great showcases for the potential that visual novels have for horror. Due to the limits in gameplay, which might be restricting for some other genres, it adds a lot that horror games can do. And, well, here's the thing... It shows how important writing is for horror. I mean, here's the thing with visual novels. With, with every other genre that you have, your story can be rescued by gameplay. But with visual novels, you don't really have that gameplay crutch. Your story just has to be really, really good. Or your imagery has to be really amazing. Which leads me into our next topic, Summer Nightmares. <sighs> no. Look, I, I don't want to elaborate on this one too much. It's, uh... <sighs> it's just kind of bad. Here's the thing, unlike something like DDLC, which uses visual novel story conventions in a subversive way, this game kind of is just a visual novel with horror content. Granted, you can see me skipping through it a lot here, mainly because I played it before, and... Well, it's, uh... It's left a mark on me, to say the least. I don't... Ugh. <clears throat> Summer Nightmare is just a bloodbath. I mean, I'm not going to explain the plot. I, I, I really think it's something with Medusa and something going on, and I don't know, murders, yada yada. Uh, uh, look, it, this game's just not good. It's just not good. And uh, here's the thing. What doesn't help is that they just throw tons of blood at the problem. Like... Look, look at this. Look at what's about to happen. That was at least three swimming pools of blood. Like three kiddie pools you could fill with blood. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on. <sighs> There's... Something that I think has to be said since I'm talking about something fairly bloody and gory. You know, blood and guts are uh, uncomfortable and unnerving on their own, but they're not really scary without given context and reason. <sighs> this game doesn't make me scared, it just makes me feel like I need to go take a cold shower. Speaking of games that make me need to take a cold shower, Corpse Party, specifically Blood Drive. I actually don't own this one, I uh, had a friend who owned it and was gracious enough to let me play it for a bit, I did not remember to record any footage, but just... Gameplay is borderline unplayable. It's got this really, really generic art style. And, well, it's it's just bad. It's really bad. There's blood everywhere. Weird ice cream monster. And whatever this thing is supposed to be, I want to go back to birthday best. Sachiko, please. 
And then uh, there was one that I mentioned in a previous video, which is Suicide of Rachel Foster, where they have an interactive suicide scene at the end. Yeah, this is just going to be the short category, because there's a whole lot of stuff that I just don't want to show here. But those games know what they are. Granted, I want to go ahead and make something clear, since I know I mentioned a few indie titles. Unlike with those movie tie-in titles, I have a little more of a sympathy for mistakes made in these smaller titles. If you were to look at something like Summer Nightmares, I don't like it, but there's definitely more passion put behind that project. It's definitely a project, and especially because it's free, that you can tell someone wanted to make. And, well, when it comes to my genuine criticisms, it's more so the writing and the lack of atmosphere and setup at times in favor of just quick, cheap, blood shock value. Maybe the game would have been better in a different gameplay style, but hey, that's just me. But, uh, you know what? I'm done with these heavy topics. Let's move on to the final category, which is ripping a term from another YouTuber who's fairly popular. <laughs> While... Some games don't restrain themselves and tend to play their cards too early or play cards that are hyper-realistic and covered in blood and think that's going to work. And other games are just cheap money grabs for a movie franchise. There's some games that just kind of are bad. And granted, this one I'm going to mention, I actually feel bad for saying it's a bad game, because I like the concept of it. Perception is a very, very interesting case study for what happens when you let the game itself dictate everything to too much of an extent. I get that the girl is blind, I get that our protagonist is, but there could have been better ways to do this. I mean, yes, you obviously need visuals, but maybe rely more on audio cues. Maybe make it so that when you tap with the cane, it stays there for longer. I don't know, just anything. I feel like a bunch of small tweaks would at least make this game an interesting concept that I have a decent amount a respect for. I already want to like this game. I want to like it. But there's just a lot here that's not working. Speaking of things which I like the concept of, but uh, think were executed poorly, let's talk about the Wii U. I know that the, it's kind of a controversial thing to say to say that the Wii U was actually one of Nintendo's more unique ideas, and honestly, I feel like it's one of the ones they had that had a lot of potential. You see, with the letter, it also falls into that camp. This game was a crowdfunding um, campaign that, well, failed. The creator still made the game, but as you can see here, it's very bare bones and not very good. Honestly, I feel like looking at the gameplay enough is really, well, enough of a sign. Here's the thing with this one. What they were trying to do was provide a unique horror experience for the Wii U, and I can respect that. It has a purpose, it has a drive from its creator. And even though it's absolutely terrible, for example, the looking controls are reversed, and as far as I've seen, there's no way to change that. Movement is wonky, and keep in mind, one of my Wii U gamepad sticks is a little bit broken. 
And uh, all the times you see me sitting still, yeah, that's me mashing every button trying to figure out exactly how to interact with things. I played through this game all the way, uh, played this game all the way through in the past. I just can't remember how you actually interact with objects. So um, yeah, needless to say, this game's just kind of sad to look at. So I would rather move on. Um, because while this game is bad, and a lot of people have said it's bad, and I will full well acknowledge, yeah, it is, I don't feel like it's appropriate to keep ripping on it, because this was a passion project. This wasn't something where it was made just for money, and I mean, it went down to a dollar on the eShop. Like, they knew that this game was not good, so I don't really see the reason to keep ripping on it. The main reason I say I have an issue with ripping on it is why rip on that game that has a clear motivation and passion put behind it when I can rip into a few games that are cash grabs. Now granted, not every game that you see on a shop for cheap is just designed to be some simple cash grab or solely made just to take your money. There are games like Nun Massacre or, well, the Bad Dream series, which is one of my personal favorites, both of which generally you'll see in the eShop for around a dollar. But, well, unlike the other two that I've shown earlier, Perception and The Letter, which I think both have some passion put into them, but just kind of fell a little short, this next one I really don't have as much sympathy for. And if the developer of this next game is watching this, I'm sorry if this was your first project or this was a project that had that same kind of passion behind it, but at least just from what I got while playing it, it felt fairly uninspired. With that disclaimer out of the way, shut I. Here's the thing, usually when I cover games, I'll show footage in the background, but here's the thing, there's not really much going on from what I've played, um, and, well, I played through it once without recording it, and I'm gonna be honest, it just, it feels like an asset flip with a whole bunch of FNAF inspiration, and I use inspiration in heavy quotes there. As you can see, mechanics like the flashlight and music box seems directly ripped from that series. And here's the thing, this game's on Switch. If it was just a cheap Steam release, I would still be judging it harshly, but this game's on consoles. I mean, it doesn't really have that excuse. That and the loading screen is straight up just the thing from Sid's room in Toy Story. I'm not even joking. Like, it it legitimately looks like the exact same weird baby spider monster hybrid thing. But, even beyond this, there are some things that I view as more soulless and honestly didn't want to record footage for because either A, I think they should get their own videos, or B, it just felt draining to do so. For starters, let's talk about the big game that's become my favorite whipping boy this month, Silent Hill HD Collection. I'm gonna be blunt with uh, saying this. I don't blame the developers for it, but Konami, why did you think this was okay? I mean, we want these games available on modern platforms, but now I just have to live in constant fear that this is going to be the game that's ported. That they're going to just take HD Collection and throw that onto Switch and Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 and PC. When all you really need to do is take the PC ports of uh, 2 and 3, contact the fans who have done those um, patches to make them viable as modern releases, and, I mean, release them on, I would say, Steam, GOG, because that's kind of become Konami's home for their franchises that they want to re-release. Silent Hill 4 actually got a re-release on there. And, uh... Switch. I'm just gonna say it. Switch should get a port of these. 
because we've never had a Silent Hill game on the Switch, and Konami, I know you love money. These games would be fairly easy to get to run on the Switch, and you could make a big deal out of the Silent Hill games have never been on a Nintendo console. I mean, there was Shattered Memories, but that's more of a spinoff, and the visual novel is a completely different game, so you could say, oh, first time it's on a Nintendo home console, and everyone would just roll with it. Um... We also have Alone in the Dark, and aside from the protagonist having the same name, this reboot had nothing to do with the original Alone in the Dark. Like, they, they I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, you, when you start, you're neither alone nor in the dark, you're just in this room with these weird people. And, I mean, this is the Wii version, so it obviously doesn't run well compared to the other two. But, from what I've heard, the other ones also have performance issues at times. So, you know, I think I just... I don't like this game, period. But even beyond that, it's the fact that what these are is just soulless cash grabs. And we all know it. Even if there might have been passion with the developers who made these actual games. Heck, I, uh... With Silent Hill, Homecoming, and Downpour, I make jokes about them all the time, but I still think the developers behind those had good intentions. Like, I don't think those are terrible games to the same extent I do HD Collection. With that rant aside, it has been... Whew. It's been a journey. Throughout the last month, I have played... I would say around 80 to, excuse me, not 80, probably around 60 to 70 horror games. Um, whether it be long and in-depth, like I played through the Silent Hill series again. Um, granted, this time I actually played through all of them, rather than just uh, playing what I usually do, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then, if I'm in the mood, Shattered Memories. Um, or taking time to actually play through Resident Evil 4 again, which I haven't played through in years. It's been a good month to kind of reconnect with a genre that I hadn't spent much time in until fairly recently, and going back in the history of it, seeing things like Haunted House on the Atari 2600, or even those early uh, movie tie-in games, it's been a fun experience. But I think we need to let Halloween go. I think we need to move on. If only there was something that I promised about a year ago, never got around to making, and uh, suddenly had a reason to make again. Now what could that be? All right, so that's a wrap to uh, horror content. Um, next month, as uh, Oberdin probably foreshadowed, we're going to be talking about logic and deduction games. And by next month, I mean it's probably going to go through till the end of December. I'm not taking a break from content, but it's just more so I have more I want to do with deduction than horror. With the horror content, it was kind of just that first video came out, I got the idea for the Silent Hill 2 review, both of those did very well, and I wanted to make one more horror-themed video just to round it all out, so that's kind of what this was, because here's the thing, genre in a bottle, that took a whole lot of time and a whole lot of games to go through. Um, aside from just the games mentioned, I think I ended up playing about 70 or so, um, and... That doesn't include some that I played afterward or uh, throughout the review process in other ways. But I think um, I want to keep trying to make content on a fairly consistent schedule, probably every 
two weeks or so, there'll be a video of some kind ranging in length from something like this, where it's around 30 minutes, to the longer ones we have, which tend to be around an hour to two hours at this point. So, yeah, um, for anyone who's new here, obviously, like and subscribe, yada yada. It's uh, kind of insane to me that the last two videos hit as high of numbers as they did. It's kind of humbling in a way. Because uh, I just kind of put those out there because I wanted to. I wasn't really going for views, and I don't know if it was because the Silent Hill 2 Direct came out nearby or because it was October, so everyone's looking for horror content. I just think um, it's neat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that covers about everything I want to say. So uh, before I keep you here for an hour, until next time, guys, this is Sharp Z signing off.